kid, I remember my first memories are of watching other kids sing and dance on stage and having this really overwhelming sense that I needed to join them. I just hungered to join them. And I soon did. By the time I was an adolescent, I was overwhelmed with musical activities. I was doing music with every hour that I could during the week. I joined the band and the orchestra and the choir, and I did jazz choir after school, and I did symphony orchestra in town. I even played with the local cello ensemble at the college. I tried to fill my life. So there was this caveat to my deep and sincere love of music, which is that I kind of hated performing, or I dreaded it. Even when I went into my cello lessons, I felt like 80% of all the practicing I'd done over the week just kind of slipped through my fingers, and I would shake, and it was very nerve-wracking. And, you know, I sang in the choir, and I would have to sometimes sit down during performances because I felt like the blood had just rushed from my body, and it was very stressful. So this has always been a struggle to fit together, and at this point in my life, Music has grown as my primary occupation. I've probably performed several thousand times, maybe more than that, in my life. And in many ways, I've learned to love it. I'm performing with the symphony tomorrow night, and I really enjoy those experiences. But it's still sometimes challenging and scary. But if this is sort of roadmap that we, as musicians, we practice and we perfect in order to then perform this ideal and transcendent musical product there's this little part of me that kind of hates music. But what if there was something, too, why I was always drawn with this intensity to making music with other people in a co-creative space of rehearsal? So in my PhD program, in the very first weeks of it, I came across the work of a musicologist named Thomas Torino, who gave these experiences some really useful language for me. He differentiates between what he calls presentational music and participatory music. Presentational music is where one group of people, the artists, prepare and provide music for another group, the audience, who do not participate at all in making the music in that particular instance. But with participatory music, it's a whole other thing. There are no audience and artist distinctions. There are only participants. And according to Torino, the goal of those music-making events is to involve the maximum number of people as possible in some kind of performance role. So, having not experienced this very much in my life, I wonder, what does this look like? So you can start the video. <laughs> and one of them puts this tiny ukulele-like instrument into your hands and teaches you how to form three very simple chords. And with those tiny rudimentary skills, you go and join this huge circle of about 50 or more people. And they're all also playing instruments very much like yours, or singing, or some of them are dancing with these hard-heeled shoes on a big wooden box called the tarima, uh, making percussive sounds and adding to the joy of the environment. So, after this experience, I learned that some of the people in that room had won Grammy Awards. Some of them traveled all over the world as professional musicians. Uh, but a lot of them were people just like me, people who had come into this as novices, or who were hobbyists, teachers and students, all kinds of just very average people. So this is a fandango, is what this event is called, and the music is Son Jarocho, comes from central Mexico. And the goal is experiential and connectional. Novices and experts coexist in creative space, and playing together is the ultimate objective. So what all this kind of tends to reveal is that different kinds of musical experiences and activities have different kinds of social values embedded in them. So when I came up here and I started playing for you today, clearly that was a presentational sort of musicking experience. You know, I was the artist and you were the audience, and there was this divide between us. And that divide is actually exacerbated by several other aspects of this space. So here I am up on stage, I'm literally above you, and I'm basked in these lovely stage lights. And you're seated in the dark. And also, you're seated in rows, right? And you can see like tops of people's heads in front of you. 
but you can scarcely see who else is here, even sitting next to you. There is a sort of social space and interaction here. So what does music do? How many of our musical experiences tend to replicate this sort of interaction? And also, what does this cause us to start to believe about ourselves? Do I, as the expert, start to believe that my role should sort of be guarded, that this position should be difficult to achieve, that you should have to cross some kind of barrier to be where I am? And how about you? I know some of you probably believe yourselves to be musical, but some of you, I'm sure, have been told that you are not musical, that you should mouth the words in choir or something like it. <laughs> And how much do these kinds of interactions tend to reinforce that sort of belief, that feeling that it proves that you are indeed not musical? I tend to believe that believing ourselves to be musical actually requires our conscious practice. So what if I came on stage and flipped the script, not to show you how good I am, but how great we are? So I'm going to ask you to do something pretty crazy. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stand. <laughs> and take a moment to just take a look around, see who's here. And I'm sure some of you think, yourselves, think of yourselves as musical, and I invite you to be sort of strong. We're going to sing together, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> So I invite you to be strong and to sort of take a lead. And for those of you who don't consider yourself the musical, and this is very awkward and I, I trust that, just take a risk. Step up. Give it a try. So we're going to do a pretty simple song. It goes like this. I am the music. Can you try that with me? I am the music. Great, that was awesome. Okay, we're going to add a second part to that. It goes like this. I am the music. If you can sing that high, please join me. I am the music. One more time. I am the music. All right, we're going to put those two parts together. You can choose to either be the first part, the lower part, or the second part, the higher part, and I don't care which you choose. We'll start out with part one, and then I'll give you a signal and we'll add part two on top of it. Sound good? All right, part one, here we go. Ready? I am the music. Keep it going. I am the music. One more time. Thank you, TEDx Helena. <laughs> Go and be musical. <laughs>